Hey kids, it's Pastor Justin. And as you can see, I've got fire on my head. But see, this represents the Holy Spirit and how Jesus sent the Holy Spirit so that we can be in due with power to be witnesses. How many of you like to receive gifts? As you can see, I've got all these presents up here and we're gonna talk about these presents and these gifts and how God sent us the gift. Jesus sent us the gift of the Holy Spirit and he wants you to receive that gift. It's one of the best gifts that you can ever receive. Well, today is Pentecost Sunday. Enjoy the rest of today's service. Hey kids, stand up on your feet and praise with us. With fire. Of the gospel, I will speak. Come on, we're gonna fly. I'm gonna fly in the spirit. I'm soaring over mountains of defeat. Because Jesus, because Jesus, you are the truth that sets me free. Jesus, you are the power in me. Jesus, you fill my heart with praise, and I'm jumping, jumping in the river of redeeming grace. I'm gonna shout hallelujah, come on, shout hallelujah, giving praise to you, my God, we reign. Come on, let me hear you shout. I'm gonna shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. Giving praise to you, my God, who reigns. Are you ready to run? Come on, we're going to run. With fire, the good news of the gospel I will speak. Come on, let's fly. I'm going to fly in the spirit. I'm soaring over mountains of defeat. Because Jesus, you are the truth that sets me free. Jesus, you are the power in me. Jesus, you fill my heart with praise. And I'm jumping in the river of redeeming grace. I'm going to shout hallelujah. Come on, let me hear you. Shout hallelujah. Giving praise to you, my God, who reigns. All right, let me hear all the boys. I'm going to shout hallelujah. All the girls. Shout hallelujah. Giving praise to you, my God, who reigns. Come on, all the boys. I'm going to shout hallelujah. All the girls. Shout hallelujah. Giving praise to you, my God, who reigns. Everybody. Shout hallelujah. Come on. Shout hallelujah. Giving praise to you, my God, who reigns. Come on, sing it. Giving praise to you, my God, who reigns. Giving praise to you, my God, who Let's lift our hands and worship Jesus this morning. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare.
Hi Celebration, I'm Natalie and today is a special day for the church. Today is Pentecost Sunday and today we are celebrating when God sent us the gift of the Holy Spirit. So let's read in our Bibles what Acts 1-8, today's memory verse, has to say about the Holy Spirit. Acts 1-8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Acts 1-8. Kids, the Holy Spirit was a wonderful gift that God sent the church. You see, when you receive Jesus, when you accept Jesus into your heart, you're given a measure of the Holy Spirit. You have a measure of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. But when you get filled with the Holy Spirit after you've accepted Jesus, then you're filled with the Holy Spirit to overflowing. I don't know about you all, but if I'm eating a bowl of chocolate ice cream, that's my favorite, I don't want just a little bowl of chocolate ice cream. I want my ice cream overflowing. Well, kids, do you all like to receive gifts? I bet you do. And God is the best gift giver, the best giver ever. We know that God sent his son Jesus, we've been talking about that recently, to die on the cross for our sin, to rise again so we can have a relationship with God, and then God sent the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In today's Bible story, Acts chapters one and two, we encourage you to read that this week. Jesus, he has risen, he's died on the cross and risen again, and he appears to many people on the earth after he has come back to life. And one time he was eating with his disciples and he told them to wait in Jerusalem, wait until you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And our memory verse says that you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. Well, guess what kids? Jesus, he then ascended into heaven and we know that he's coming back one day. And then the Acts chapter two tells us that the disciples, the other believers, they were gathered in a room, they were praying. And all of a sudden there was a sound like a mighty rushing wind and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Above their heads, it appeared like tongues of fire over each of them. And they began to speak in other tongues. That's the evidence that we've been filled with the Holy Spirit. We've received a special prayer language. And we're gonna give you an opportunity at the end of today's episode to accept Jesus into your heart and if you've done that, to receive the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So don't forget, watch all the way to the end of today's episode for a secret code and enjoy today. Happy Pentecost Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pickin, Pickin Noses, here with a breaking news story. I was awoken from my nap earlier this evening with my dog, Snot. I was handed this compelling and urgent story for you earlier today. In the town of Jerusalem, there was a loud commotion. There was a mighty Russian wind. There were tongues of fire. There was people speaking in unknown languages. And we have the full covered story with Newsy Newsom live in the field. Take it away, Newsy. Get out of the shot. How many times do I have to tell you? You don't get in the shot. It's my shot. Hey, you're live. You're live. <laughs> Thank you, Pickin. Um, your nose is looking very clean. You're definitely living up to your name. Um, I'm Newsy Newsom from WFWC Jerusalem, and today we're figuring out a mystery that has been circulating around Jerusalem. It involves the townspeople claiming that the followers of Jesus are speaking in foreign tongues. Now, we need to figure this out. So today we have three guests, the first of which is Timothy. And so Timothy, can you tell us what happened? Okay, so I was just walking along the street, minding my own business, along with dozens upon dozens of other people, when all of a sudden, 
we hear a commotion going on in one of the upper rooms, and Jesus' disciples came out speaking in other languages. How did you know they were speaking in other languages? So, so there was a man next to me, and he was amazed because he heard one of the disciples speaking in his language, and he was a couple countries across. So what was he saying? He was giving thanks, and he was praising God. And by the way, this was perfect language. That's fantastic. So then one of the disciples, Jesus' disciples, Peter, I believe, he said that this was Jesus' Holy Spirit. That's amazing. And in order to get that, we have to accept Jesus into our hearts as our Lord and Savior. Thank you so much, Timothy. We appreciate your input. And next, we have Rebecca. How are you doing, Rebecca? Well, thank you. Very, very good. So, can you tell us what happened? Well, of course. Well, I personally knew Peter. Personally? Really? That's what one of our executive producers who executives over the producer of the producer. Yes, that is correct, I think. Well, when Jesus was brought into Jerusalem for his trial after he was arrested, I was with him at the bonfire. And one of the girls there asked him if he was one of Jesus' disciples. Now, I thought he was going to say, yes, he was, and tell them about how good God was and how he truly was God's son. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. Really? Peter? Yes, he denied Jesus, and that just made me so incredibly sad. That is really sad. So what, then what happened? Well, you all know that Jesus was crucified, right. and then three days later rose again. Well, he visited us after he rose and told us that he would send a helper and a comforter to guide us. And during the Passover, we were all praying in the upper room. And suddenly there was this mighty rushing wind, and it was as if tongues of fire were on our heads, and everyone in the room was speaking a different language. Wow, that's amazing. So, that, so then what happened? Well, Peter rushed out of the room. The same Peter that denied Jesus was suddenly telling all these people about Jesus and how good he was. That is truly amazing. Thank you so much, Rebecca. We appreciate what you're saying. I'm not here with Lydia. And I'd like to inform you that she's very short, so it's going to be pretty hard to give her the mic, because I can be like down here. <sighs> well, Newsy, me and my family were in Jerusalem doing, visiting for the Jewish holiday, when suddenly there was this great commotion. Suddenly, Peter and all of Jesus' disciples came out talking in different languages and walking funny, as if they were drunk. Jesus' disciples? Drunk? Never. Exactly, Newsy. Um, well, Peter heard this, and he just gave this powerful speech about God's plan for salvation and what Jesus did for us. He even told us about how the prophet Joel prophesied about this years later, years ago. That's fantastic. Then what? Well, then I did as Peter said, and I gave my life to Jesus. Now I have the free gift of the Holy Spirit. That's fantastic. Well, after this, I learned about evidence of speaking in other tongues. It's amazing. Whenever I'm tending to my, to my garden, I speak in my special prayer language. Whenever I'm washing my clothes, I speak in my special prayer language. Whenever I'm making dinner, I speak in my special prayer language. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Well, you can have it too. Really? Will you be willing to pray with me? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to go pray with Lydia. But this was Newsy Newsom, your on the scene, live action reporter from WFWC, Jerusalem. Back to you, Pickin. Wow, Newsy, I tell you, that was a compelling story. I myself am interested now in being filled with the Holy Spirit. Thank you. To all of you, our listeners, for tuning in this evening for our breaking news story. This is Pickin', Pickin' Noses, signing off.
Hi kids, I'm Amy and I am so glad to be with you this morning. Well, I have got a great memory verse for you today. So grab your Bibles and get ready. Today, we are teaching you about Pentecost Sunday when the church received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Kids at home, do you like to get gifts? Oh, oh, did someone say gifts? Did someone say gifts? I love gifts. Hey Blaze, how are you? I am great and I tell you why I'm great. Because my birthday is coming up right around the corner, and I just want to let you and everyone out there know that I love dog treats. Just if you, if you happen to get some at the store, some dog treats, I also saw some nice toys that I love to get my paws on. Listen, my birthday's yes. coming up. Just let you know. Okay, Mr. Blaze, we'll write that down. We'll remember that. All right, well, silly Blaze, I wasn't talking about gifts. Oh. I'm talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh. Today's Pentecost Sunday, and we want to teach the kids how they can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. Would you like to stick around and help me teach them? I, I would. You know, I love the Holy Spirit because you and me talked about the Holy Spirit, and I remember that he is our helper, our comforter, our advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and standby. I remember that is right, Blaze. You are an amazing dog. All right, kids, our memory verse today is from Acts chapter 2, verse 4. But I would like to read the first three verses just to give you some background on what's happening at this time. All right, let's start at Acts chapter 2, verse 1, which says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. Oh, oh a, a rushing mighty wind? Oh, that, yes. that reminds me. The other day, I was outside playing fetch. I, I got, we're somewhere down here. I got my. You were playing oh. fetch? <laughs> oh, Mr. Blaze, you found a stick. Yes. Oh, I love the sticks. I love playing fetch. Let me tell you, I go over here, I get it, and I bring it back. I get it, and I bring it back. I get that it. That sounds tiring. And I bring it back. That oh, it, it is, tiring. but I love it. I love it. I tell you, I love it. But anyways, I was outside, and then all of a sudden, a storm came, and a big wind, and so I ran inside because, well, it started raining cats and dogs, which I don't really understand why they do call I it cats either. and dogs and how it can rain cats and dogs. Anyways, I was inside, and that wind was so loud, so loud. Really? Well, that's how it was on the day of Pentecost. It's, the Bible says it was a mighty rushing wind, and the Bible also says they filled the whole house where they were sitting. Isn't that, that so cool? It is. Uh, they were sitting in a house. You know, I have a yeah. nice dog house. I got it for my birthday Ew. last year. Oh, it's pretty. You pretty have pretty. a brand new dog house? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, kids, we got to go see Blaze's new dog house. That sounds pretty cool. Well, then verse 3 says, and there were appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. Fire! Fire, fire, where's the fire? Fire, Here, oh, got it, got it, got the hose, we're ready, Bla put it out. Bla Blaze, there's no fire in celebration. We oh. had this talk last time, do you remember? Yeah, I just, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a well-trained dog, and so every time you say fire or anyone says fire, I just, I go into action mode, you know? So, S so I don't need Blaze. my hose? No, no, Okay, Mr. all right, Blaze. I'll put it back. Once again, we're talking about the fire of the Holy Spirit, and now we get to our memory verse, which is Acts chapter 2, verse 4, which says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Isn't that amazing, kids? They were all filled, not one, not two, not three, but all, 120 of them were filled in the upper room. So kids, and what happened is they began to speak with other tongues, and tongues is the evidence that we have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, evidence. I know about evidence. Let me tell you. Let me show you what happened to me uh -oh. the other day. Uh-oh. thing at now? Please, how do you know about evidence? That's like a police word. Here, if that oh, just, oh, oh, what'd you go, Mr. Pl Starbucks? <laughs> oh, I love Starbucks, and I go with Rico to Starbucks oh. all the time. Rico's my buddy. But let me tell you what happened. The other day, he went without me. And no. I know, oh yeah, let me tell you about it. I know because he showed up with a whipped cream mustache right on his, right on his snout, right there. And I knew no. that was the evidence that he had gone without me and got that puppuccino with the whipped cream. Mm, uh, I was mad. I was mad. Mr. Blaze, I'd be upset too. I'd give that Rico piece of my mind. Nah. But you're exactly right. Just like Rico had evidence of Starbucks, the evidence of us being filled with the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Yeah, I noticed my owner, he speaks in that special language, tongues. And really? sometimes, yeah, he speaks in tongues while he's uh while he's holding this this big book right here. Oh you see this big book? that's a Bible, Blaze. Oh, okay. What? That's uh -huh. great. Yeah, you know, I've been wondering about that language because sometimes I understand him and then other times I don't. I thought he had learned Spanish or something. Silly Blaze. Sometimes he prays in tongues sitting in my favorite chair. He has obviously not learned that that's my chair. But anyways, he'll pray there. He'll pray while in the car or while he's taking me for a walk. 
Come to think about that, it, he uses that special language pretty much everywhere. That's right, Blaze, and that's what we're supposed to do. You can pray anywhere, kids. You can pray at home. You can pray in your car. You can even pray at recess. We, God wants us to pray, and the Bible says that when we pray in our spirit, it builds up our most holy faith. It kind of makes our spirit man on the inside. It makes him big and strong the more we pray. Remember like that weight you had last time? Oh, and it yeah. makes you strong? Well, yeah. praying in the Holy Spirit makes our spirit man strong on the inside. That is wow. pretty cool. Wow, teach. Praying in a tongue sure is important. You're exactly right, Blaze. There are so many benefits to being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. When we don't know what to pray for, God helps us by us praying in the Holy Spirit. Wow. That's amazing. Hey, teach. Can kids be filled with the Holy Spirit and pray in tongues? Yes, absolutely. Kids, the Holy Spirit is for you too. God wants you filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, just like grown-ups. Acts 2.39 tells us that the promise of the Holy Spirit is to you and your children who are all afar off. The gift of the Holy Spirit is for everyone, mom, dad, grandmas, grandpas, and you kids. Wow. So if you've asked Jesus into your heart, kids, you are ready to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Today, at the end of the service, we're going to give you an opportunity to do just that. Wow, what a great day. Pentecost Sunday sure is special. It is. It's a big celebration, Mr. Blaze. You know, and speaking of celebrations, we here in Celebration happened to know it was your birthday, uh, so we got you a gift. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, give, give me All me. right. I think he's excited, kids. Oh, yes. Can you guess what it is? Oh, wow. Look at he is making a mess with open all it, his wrapping it, paper. It, I think he's excited. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh yeah. Look what we got. Yes, him. yes, sir. Got some dog treats. You know I love dog treats. You know, Blaze, we had a feeling you might like this. Kids yummy, at home, yummy, can yummy. you say with me happy birthday, Blaze? Are you ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday, Blaze. Wow, thank you guys so much. Bye, Mr. Place. Well, hello there, kids. It's me, Newsy News, and I'm on the scene live with a celebration favorite, Fisherman Frank. How are you, man? Hey, hey, y'all. Hey, hey y'all, how y'all doing today? It's great to see you, Fisherman Frank. Well, we all saw it last week. We were in horror as we watched you have a run-in with a gator. It ain't tangled up on the boat. Oh, you gotta be careful with my hands. Oh my, oh my, oh Jesus, help me, help me, Jesus. Tell us what happened. Yeah, you see, I got my hat back. I got my hat back. I was worried yeah, it's about pretty that. pretty wet. But you know what, I, I tell you what, I caught me a gator. Can you believe it? It was a delicious gator. I tell you what. Wait, hold on, hold on. I'm him up. What? Did you say delicious? Delicious. Mm, tastes like chicken. Tastes really? great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I should have brought you some. Did you want me to bring you some? I would have loved I'll bring you some tenfold. Yeah. I'll bring you some of my tenfold. Yeah, okay. that's right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, bring you some. I'll like look the But yeah, but yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was good eating. Yeah, I had to catch me another one. Yeah. But I tell you what, I thought that gator was going to catch me. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I just, I began to pray praying the Holy Ghost and all of a sudden I just turned around and all of a sudden I caught that gator yanked him right out of the water and I tell you I mean you'll see him y'all take a look at this take a look at this you want to see him you're stealing my job okay listen take a look at this clip we have a fisherman Frank hey y'all look it's fisherman Frank and I am okay look I caught me a gator can you believe it thank God I caught that gator and I tell you what I want you to know that God saved me I'm gonna be all right and look at this gator right here. I tell you what, this is gonna be some good eating right here. I tell you what, I can't wait to chop up this tail, put it on the fire, it's gonna taste, fry it up, and uh, it's gonna taste like chicken. I tell you what, it tastes good. Well, that was, that was something. That's right, yeah, I mean, did you see how big that gator was? <laughs> I mean, gator. I tell you what, that gator, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger every time I tell somebody about it, I tell you what, but it was delicious. I tell you what, that's right, it was delicious. And you know what, God gave me the vision. He showed me how to turn around and how to catch that gator because of praying in the Holy Ghost. The kids, I tell you what, if you pray in the Holy Ghost, God will lead you and guide you into all truth and he'll show you the right way how to do it, especially when you're in need. When you don't know what to pray for as you all, as the Bible says, you can pray in the Holy Ghost. Hold on, I'm preaching real quick, dude. Let me finish my preaching, let me finish my sermon and, and pray in the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost tell you what to do. Oh, I need a mic. That's right, you heard it here, kids. Right here on F, what are we? WFW? WFWC Jerusalem. Oh, okay. All this right. was Fisherman Frank and Newsy News from live at the scene. Goodbye. Today's Bible story is found in Acts chapter 1 
in chapter 2. God's Story Peter Preaches So remember how part of God's story is about a guy named Peter who followed Jesus even though he messed up sometimes? Well, it goes like this. After Jesus died to rescue us, he came back to life. Forty days later, he rose into the sky, right up to heaven. Right before he left, he told his disciples, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you power. Then you will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and everywhere in the world. After that, Peter and the others weren't sure what to do, so they waited together in Jerusalem. While they waited, a sound like wind came from heaven. They saw flames that looked like tongues land on their heads. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Other people who followed Jesus were waiting in Jerusalem too. And when they heard the sound, they all crowded together, even though they spoke lots of different languages and couldn't talk to each other. But the Holy Spirit gave Peter and the disciples power. Now they could show people how to follow Jesus. See, the Holy Spirit helps us do things we can't do by ourselves. That day, the disciples spoke, and everybody understood them. That's like if someone said something in Latin or Swahili, and we understood it. Seems impossible, but that's what happened. So Peter stood up and told everybody how the Holy Spirit had come, and that we can all follow Jesus. He said, turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. By the way, that means that when we believe in Jesus, we get the gift of the Holy Spirit too. Anyway, Peter told huge crowds of people about Jesus that day, and more than 3,000 people chose to follow him. Jesus had given Peter a job, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, Peter would do that job for the rest of his life. And that's part of the story of Peter. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jesus died. He came back to life. He rose up to heaven. His followers had a job. They waited for the Holy Spirit. The Spirit came. Peter spoke. Everyone understood. People believed in Jesus. They got the Holy Spirit too. And that's a part of God's story. Well, kids, we had a great time today teaching you about Pentecost Sunday and getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want to give all of you at home an opportunity to do that right now. But first, I want to make sure you are born again. Before you can get filled with the Holy Spirit, you must be born again, which means you have prayed the prayer of salvation and asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. So if you've not prayed the prayer of salvation, let's do that right now. I want you to say this prayer with me. Father God, I thank you for Jesus. I believe that you sent Jesus to this earth to live, to die, and to rise again just for me. Father, I am so sorry for all of the wrong things I've done, for all of the sins that I have committed in my life. And I ask you to forgive me of all of that wrong right now and wash my heart clean. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life and I accept him as my King of Kings and my Lord of Lords. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for forgiving me. I thank you for washing me clean. I thank you for making me a Christian. I love you and praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Kids at home, if you prayed that prayer, you are now a Christian. You are born again and you are now ready to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Miss Natalie told you that the, the Holy Spirit is a gift. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he told us he would not leave us comfortless, that he was sending us a special helper, and that special helper is the Holy Spirit. Kids being filled with the Holy Spirit is amazing. You always have someone with you. He's a comforter, he's a friend, and he will encourage you, he will uplift you. The Holy Spirit is a benefit to all of you. So I wanna encourage you to get filled today. Getting filled with the Holy Spirit is easy. Just like if I was to hand you this gift, all you have to do is receive it. And that's how it is with the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is receive it. I'm gonna pray. And what I want you to do is to kind of shut off your mind, close off what you're thinking and just focus on God. And then the words will come out of your spirit. Now you won't understand what you're saying because it's a special prayer language between you and God. Nobody else, just between you and God. 
So it might sound funny at first, just like when a baby learns to talk. We can't understand what they're saying at first. They know what they're saying, but we can't understand it yet. Well, that's how your spirit language is. You're not going to understand it, but God does. You are talking to God. And then the more that you pray and the more that you use that, it's kind of like a muscle. It just gets stronger and more developed. So I want to encourage you to get filled with the Holy Spirit today. You don't have to be in church to do it. You can do it right there in your living room. So what I want you to do is to bow your heads and close your eyes. I want you to put your hands up like this because you are ready to receive. We are ready to receive that free gift of the Holy Spirit. All right, I'm gonna pray I'm, and then I'm going to say one, two, three, and I want you to get those words to come up out of your spirit and to start talking. Remember, it's gonna sound funny, but that's okay. Just keep praying and then I want you to pray every day. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Father God, I thank you for all of these children at home that are watching and their desire to get filled with the Holy Spirit. So Father, right now I ask you to fill them with your Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Father, I praise you and I thank you for the Holy Spirit. So kids, if you got filled today, you're going to have that special prayer language. I want you to pray every day. Don't miss a day, pray every day. And you don't have to have, you don't have to be in church to pray. You can pray at home. You can pray in your bedroom. You can pray outside. It's such beautiful spring days. I encourage you to make sure you pray. Use your spirit language and it will grow and it will develop. Now kids, if you got filled with the Holy Spirit, if those special words came out of your belly just now, I would like to send you a book, or even if you would like to know more information about the Holy Spirit, we have a little book that we like to give the kids here in the church that explains more about the Holy Spirit and gives you great scripture references that you and your parents can study and learn more about the Holy Spirit and the great gift He is for all of us. Well, we love you. I'm so excited that you got filled with the Holy Spirit. I encourage you to pray every day. Use your prayer language. We love you. Can't wait to see you until next time. Happy Pentecost Sunday. Bye. Today's secret code is the Holy Spirit gives us power. Thank you for watching Celebration Online. Kids, I want to encourage you to make sure that you're in church. At every one of our Family Worship Center locations, we have an amazing children's ministry that you can be a part of. If you live here in the Florence area, come see us. You can meet my husband, Pastor Steve, and see myself over here in Celebration. Also, if you live in the Sumter area, join us at our brand new location in Sumter, South Carolina. If you live in Georgetown, you can go worship with Pastor Justin and Miss Joanna at their church. And if you live in Columbia, connect with Pastor JT and Miss Natalie at their church. Kids, come see us in celebration at Family Worship Center. We have a great time every Sunday. I, 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 literally, I, literally, cannot, I literally cannot read this. Are these prescription? <laughs> is, is this the story for this evening? This is the... You, is this the, is this the right, no, I don't, I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to her. What's your name? <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm sorry. You need to do the clapper thing? Yeah. You just, you keep clapping. You clap, clap, clap. Lucy clap, Lucy, clap, clap. intro, outro, hey, finale. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 Take blah. Take one. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I was woken up from my nap with my dog, Patricia. <laughs> okay. I don't know why that's so funny. I, li I literally, I don't know the story. I don't know. I'm just going to wing it. <clears throat> All right. That's a wrap. <laughs>